A Stuart Beam Engine Restoration, this one is part three. Replacing the brass screws with studs to hold the valve rod gland cover in place, packing the gland, refitting the valve chest, setting the valve timing, and finding out where the main knocking noise is coming from. The first thing to do is to clean up the face of the valve, which is not in very good condition. I'm using coarse wet to dry sandpaper, followed by fine wet to dry sandpaper. The slide valve is looking much better now, so I'm going to turn my attention to the gland packing of the valve rod. The gland itself has been drilled a little bit on the deep side. In this clip, I'm removing the gland packing that I fitted in the last episode. I thought I'd take this opportunity to refinish the valve chest because it wasn't very good. I'm using the same method that you've just seen when I cleaned up the slide valve two grades of wet to dry sandpaper. This clip shows how deep the gland hole is in the gland itself. Whoever built this engine made a bit of a mistake, I think, in the depth of drilling. Because this hole has been drilled so deeply, the main drill must have nearly come through at the other side. But it's not the end of the world, it is fixable. I'm going to look through my box of 7BA bits and pieces to see if I can find some studs. And in this clip I can see that I have two proper Stuart studs. These will be perfect for the job, but I thought it would show an alternative method. If you fit long bolts like this, all the way down to the bottom of the threaded hole in the gland, then chop the heads off the bolts and clean them up, these will make perfectly adequate studs for holding gland flanges onto glands. In fact, the studs that were supplied with my Stuart Victoria set of castings are just pieces of threaded bar. Personally, I don't like this. I do prefer proper studs. They look better. And here you see a pair of proper studs fitted into the valve chest. In this clip, I'm fitting an O-ring to the valve spindle. This will go down inside the gland and it will seal the hole into the valve chest, which is very, very close to the edge. And this, by the way, is not just an ordinary O-ring, it is a silicone steam-grade O-ring, very important. And this is where it's going to live, right at the bottom of the hole where the gland packing will be. I thought I would just mention that this gland flange is too thick. I will be remachining this to a sensible thickness, but not in this episode because I want to show why it needs machining. In my box of old pieces of graphited yarn, I found some proper graphited yarn that came from Stuart Models quite a long while back. So I thought I may as well use this for packing the gland. In this clip you can clearly see why it's a good idea to have studs with parallel shanks, because in the flange type gland covers, a lot of the time the parallel shank is visible, in this case it won't be. Or at least not until I've machined some of the thickness from this flange. It's time now to refit all the parts that I've removed to see what happens. I'm using plenty of steam oil to lubricate the valve and the spindle at both ends. I'm just checking that the valve moves fully up and down and uncovers the ports in the steam chest. After rotating the valve rod to set the position of the valve, it doesn't look too bad. The two operating levers need a bit of attention. I gave them a good clean up with some Scotch Brite and I can't live with these chewed up bolts in the end, so I removed both of them, and then shortened a couple of commercial 7BA bolts. I just chopped them off using a pair of cutters, then cleaned up the threaded end on my one inch belt sander, so they fit in the holes perfectly. I'm sure you will agree they look a lot better than the previous ones. Assembly is the reverse of disassembly, or at least it's supposed to be, Refitting this shaft was very fiddly, it seemed to refuse to go into the other bearing, but it did in the end. I'm going to fit the drive pin that connects the eccentric rod to the first arm. I'm doing this because I need to see how the valve's working relative to the rotation of the engine. Here I'm tightening the bolts using my Barco spanner, and you will notice that it doesn't round the edges of the bolts. Barco adjustable spanners seem to be a lot better than other adjustable spanners that I've used. With everything in position, when I rotate the flywheel, you can see what happens. The top of the valve rod hits the actual gland. I adjusted the position of the pair of arms to stop this from happening, but the valve timing is not 100% correct now. 
I'll correct this in due course, because the entire assembly has to come off again, for various reasons. I thought that it was a good idea at this stage to clean up the steam chest cover, which was a bit of a mess. I also removed the ridiculous number of aluminium shim washers on the inlet pipe. Then I unbolted the inlet flange from the steam chest cover, so I could clean it up using my usual method of different grades of wet dry sandpaper. Before I finish the engine I will spend more time cleaning this, but it will be ok for the moment, here I'm refitting the flange. The fit of the steam chest cover on the steam chest itself is very good, probably a little bit too tight really. But once I fit the nuts everything should be fine I think. Initially I'm fitting the nuts to the steam chest studs using a nut spinner. I will eventually use a spanner to tighten these because I can't get them tight enough on the existing gaskets. In any case, when I reassemble the engine for the final time, I will replace both of these gaskets, because they are both old and very much past their best. Pretty much like me really, but I seem to get by. In this clip, I'm assembling the crossbar that operates the valve. With this type of valve mechanism, the two operating arms that push the valve up and down need to be set very accurately, and I haven't bothered setting them perfectly at the moment because they're all going to come apart again. So you may notice that the crossbar moves about a bit. Please don't bother writing in to tell me this, I am well aware of it. Time to see if it works, I've connected the airline, put the cable tie in place, and I'm turning on the compressed airline. I haven't bothered resetting the valve timing so the engines are knocking as usual. The funny noise you can hear, the squeaking noise, is air blowing past the gasket. So using my Barco spanner, I tightened up the nuts that hold the steam chest cover to the steam chest. I'm now going to run the engine, and so you can hear what it sounds like, I'm going to shut up. As I mentioned earlier, you can clearly see how the valve mechanism is twisting slightly. That's because the two push rods are not perfectly lined up. Here, I'm making adjustments to the position of the slide valve. But whatever I do, the thick gland cover prevents me from setting the timing correctly. At the moment, the timing is retarded. The slide valve is opening and closing far too late. You can hear it opening after top dead center. And that's why the knocking has got a lot worse. This is one of the reasons for the bad knocking sound. I'm moving the slide valve by hand, and as you can see, there's an awful lot of play in the Watts parallel motion links. And also, the pin that goes through the end of the piston rod is a rattle fit in the bush. And to make things worse, the hole in the centre of the bush is not at 90 degrees to the piston rod. That's about it for this episode. I'll leave the engine running in slow motion. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.